If you're like me, one of the best scenes in sci-fi games and movies is the starship battle scene. Seeing the fighters whiz by, the cruisers and battleships pounding on each other, and of course the command ship bringing the pain. I've always been a sucker for games that bring space fleets and real-time strategy together well, especially when the game itself weaves a beautiful combat mechanic in it. Well, Ironclad Games and Stardock Entertainment created the go-to RTS game for the sci-fi and space battle lover. It's called Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion. Now, Sins was released in June of 2012 and has several DLC packs since, but it has stood the test of time beautifully. You are given the choice of three completely unique species of beings and two completely unique faction groups within each race, making six perfectly balanced tech trees and strategies. If you choose the human, or TEC as they're called, you must then choose between the faction that wishes to defend and create strong and stable defenses, or the aggressive, offensive faction that builds mighty weapons of war. If you choose the Advent, a religious group of humans that have evolved to become psychic creatures, you must choose either the faith-based unity or the mind-bending aggressor. Or if you choose the Fasari, an unknown alien that has come from distant stars, you must choose to focus your knowledge of faster-than-light travel as a means to move your people through the stars, or to create powerful fleets and weapons to breach shields and space-time. Once you figure that, you must then do battle with the other factions in this massive universe. Being able to play with up to 8 players and having hundreds of planets to command, each game can span several days of intense conflict. Thankfully, the game is built to save your progress in any mode, including multiplayer, to give your 15 hour match a breather for a nap or a snack. The graphics and mechanics within the game are intense, especially considering its scale. End result is you really are put into the commander's seat. You are given the freedom to look into your combat situation from almost any angle and distance, making your strategy and order even more definable. With the ability to command over 200 units and being able to see the fire points on each of them makes you use actual strategies for your fleet. There are only two downsides to Sins of a Solar Empire. The first is the learning curve. With only a few short tutorials on how the user interface works and basic outline of how to access tech trees, you are left with several hours ahead of you to figure out how to actually command a fleet and control your space. Due to the complex and well-developed nature of each race, there would need to be a tutorial for each race and its abilities, virtually impossible to do practically. The way around this issue is to play with someone who owns the game and has put time into it, or play the single player campaign. Which actually brings us to the second problem. The second is that it has no single player story. That's right, you are given the hint of a story in the intro cinematic and are left to guess the rest as there is no single player campaign or story arc. All this beauty is left to your imagination and the countless battles and multiplayer skirmishes you are thrust into. All things considered, however, Sins of a Solar Empire is highly recommended. Truly a game for any gamer. With massive battles, mind-blowing ships and upgrades, and unique races and maps at your fingertips, without fail, hours and hours of fun.